I'm Justin Franson here with Sensei Benny the Jet Yurkidas, the legendary kickboxer. He won how many title fights? Uh, well, actually, I, I hold uh, six titles in five weight divisions. I'm uh, 63 and 0 with uh, 57 KOs. <laughs> 63 and 0 title fights, never lost a title fight. He's one of the world's famous martial artists. You'll see him on many, many movies. And some, who are some of the celebrities that you paired up with? Uh, well, you know what? Anybody that has a name uh, that I work with from, you know, I'm uh, talking from Patrick Swayze to, you know, uh, uh, John Cusack and working with, you know, Nicolas Cage and work, work, I work with so many different, you know. And then how about the martial artists? And martial artists, the best of the best I work with, with Jean LaBelle, you know, I work with Tony Onoki, which is the Muhammad Ali. Of, uh, of, uh, of Japan, and so I worked with, there were so many uh, legends that I've worked with, and uh, actually there's not too many alive, um, you know, that I've actually worked with back in the 60s and 70s, and uh, a lot of them, uh, they're no longer here, but uh, I'm still bobbing and weaving. Yeah, you are. Well, Sensei and I go way back, it's his wife, Sarah Eagle Woman, your kid is, is a shaman healer. I, we met through her actually, and he's he's lived in the area that I grew up, and so it's just unbelievable to have these resources in the backyard. Now, early on when I was doing athleticism, I'd come into his training gym and we'd sit down and chat for a while and talk about different philosophies. Sensei's Benny's philosophy is so unbelievable. He goes in and he looks at just approaching performance and training and preparation at an entirely different level. He's When he's building sets on Hollywood, he's doing these functional workouts, the same type of stuff we would do with medicine balls or kettlebells. He's being creative and just getting the whole crew to do workouts with them. And then when you get in the ring, you have to go and watch all of his old fights. I mean, it's unbelievable. When, whenever you know, obviously he doesn't lose very often, but if he gets hit, he'll smile and he won't give his power away and he'll like give the other fighter credit for getting a shot in. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. It, it, so, and then he'll just, he'll know that it came from that direction and you know, it'll never get hit there again. And so it's a really, really powerful. He's wise beyond years, such a soulful person and human. Uh, his wife is just a beautiful healer inside and out and and you know he is the same in the ring and outside the ring and mentoring individuals on on how to become the best that they could possibly become so such an honor and privilege to sit here with you today My and uh, go beyond with you and so uh thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to to be with us uh My pleasure yeah i would like to start with with Taking everyone back to where it all began. I know you grew up in a legacy of fighters in your family, and uh, just it was it was just an eight to you to fight. So bring us up to your early stages of fighting. Well, uh, first of all, uh, my mother was a professional wrestler. My father, professional boxer. There's nine black belts in my family. There's four champions in my family. So at the age of three, when kids had fire trucks, I had boxing gloves. So I started competing boxing at the age of five at the Olympic Auditorium. And then I started judo. Hey, I, so I, in 58, I started boxing. In 60, I started judo. All the way up until 63, I started Kenpo Karate. And so when I wasn't doing, when I wasn't uh, actually competing in judo, I was boxing Pee Wee Division, and then I would actually do martial arts. <clears throat> and so, all the way up until 65, <clears throat> at the internationals, this is the first time that Bruce Lee came and actually did a demonstration at the internationals. And this is at the Long Beach Arena. And I was sitting, no further than I'm uh, sitting with you, I'm sitting down, five feet away, sitting down, cross leg, watching him. My mother used to talk about internal training, talk about internal power, and I, I would listen to my mother, but I didn't understand what internal training meant, what internal power meant. 
I heard everything she said, and she would try to explain that to me, but I was very young. So when I saw Bruce Lee, he was talking about internal training, internal power, and he did the four finger strike. He got this guy that was 250 pounds, and he put a metal plate, okay, a weight uh, plate on his chest, and he got up into a stance, and real solid stance, and Bruce Lee put his fingers on the plate and he was talking about how he generates his internal power. And I said, my mom was talking about that. My mom was telling me about that. And he made this noise that I've never heard. And he went, Wah! I hit the plate with his body, just ricocheted. This guy bounced back. They put a chair three feet behind. He went back, hit the chair, went over. I jumped <laughs> up. I said, that's what I want to do. And so, from that point, I would actually go to my mom and say, tell me more about that internal power. Because actually my dream was to compete against Bruce, Bruce wow. Lee. That was my dream. Because I, I was very quick, but I wanted, you know, I wanted to see how fast I really was. So I told my brother, because my brother was working with him. Right. And I told my brother, do you think I can go in and train with them? And he says, you, you have to earn that right. I said, well, what do I have to do? And he says, well, you have to, you know, have a name in this soul. I said, have a name, okay. So this is about the time in 69, hey, that uh, uh, actually Elvis Presley was putting a team together. And so actually, uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, oh my God, I just uh, slipped my mind. But uh, he started a team. He started going around the United States finding the best, and they were having eliminations. I'm, uh, I can't believe I, Mr. Ed Parker. Okay. Hey, Mr. Ed Parker, I couldn't believe that. Uh, and he put this team together, okay. and I was the youngest. I was just turning 18, I was the youngest on this team, and they were much older and so forth. So I beat everybody to get on the team, and we went to Europe, yeah. and everybody was talking about who was going to fight this guy from Belgium. His name was Lemons. And I said, I'll fight him. And they all looked at me like, you'll fight him? I said, yeah, I'll fight him. So they fight, they figured, okay, well, I'll be the sacrifice lamb. That's what <laughs> they thought. So I went in there and I fought Lemons. I went out there and I, I beat him. I mean, I was just so fast, I beat him. And then I went on to beat others on our team and we came back. So I told my brother, now can I spot Bruce? You know, Bruce Lee, and he said, you still don't have enough experience. He said, okay. So then I started, I started in, in 70, I started training and I was beating everybody. And my last fight in the, in the, at the Nationals was in 73 against John Natividad. And we went, and he was, you know, he was the star of the day, and we went overtime, five times overtime. And it was a fight to people still talking about that right now to this day. And after that, he beat me by one point. I said to myself, okay, that's, that's fair. I started boxing professionally with Bobby Chacon and I started with, uh, going with him and then uh, I started boxing professionally. I was gonna box professionally. And then my brother, Howard Hansen, started the WKA. And he said, you wanna fight full contact karate? And I said, what does that mean? He says, it's karate to the knockout. And I said, I won't get disqualified? And he said, no, no, it's to the knockout. But I won't get disqualified. So I couldn't understand to the knockout. So we go to Hawaii, no weight divisions, no rules, no nothing. Saturday, I fought seven times. The first time I knocked out my opponent, boom, I dropped him, knocked him out. And I'm looking around to see if they're going to disqualify me. And they raised my hand. I said, all right. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't get disqualified. <laughs> and so I, I, I fought uh, six more. And, I, I beat, and then Sunday, I was supposed to fight four more times. So I, I beat uh, Bernice White and some others. And, uh, and then it was against four of us. It was me against Bernice White and my brother-in-law against Dana Goodson. So they, uh, I told, after I beat Bernice White, I told my brother-in-law, if you don't stop him, he's gonna win. He's a favorite here. I said, if you can't, if you can't stop him, hurt him for me. <laughs> and so he didn't. He didn't win. He lost the decision. 
And because they didn't want me to, they didn't want to see me fight my brother-in-law. They wanted, right. they wanted, you know, uh, David and Goliath. They wanted to see. Now he's six foot three, two hundred forty-five pounds. I'm five six at one hundred and forty pounds. So I ended up fighting him, and I ended up stopping him in the fourth round, and uh, I took the title. So I came back from Hawaii, telling my brother, now I have enough experience. I have titles, and this is not. I earned the right to spar with him, and then he, and then uh, he, uh, he died, he passed away. And uh, at that time, I was so confused understanding why did he die? Why did this have to happen before I get a chance? And, and I realized that we ha all have journeys, and that was his journey and he was ready to leave. So from that point, I continue. For up until 75, I fought full contact, held the title, and then my brother, and, and they were calling me world champion. I said, how can I be world champion? I haven't been outside the United States fighting like this. And they said, oh, you wanna fight outside? I said, yeah. You wanna call me world champion? Yeah. So this is, they fight two champions from Thailand. And I fought Noran Noy, and, and Ernest Hart fought the other champion. So, uh, I was the main event in Ernest Hart with the semi event, and he got stopped in the third round. And so they brought him in, and he was hurt pretty bad. And, and I said, Wow, this is the first time. I, who heard of full contact karate? I mean, uh, uh, kickboxing. Right. I, mean, I mean, Muay Thai. And so he was out there. So I came out, and this is at the Olympic Auditorium, and he's doing his prayer. Now, I've never seen that before. And so I'm moving to his music, and all the Thai people think I'm making fun of him. I never seen that before. I didn't know he was praying. I just thought he was just, you know, uh, that was something he did. And uh, so all the Thai people were getting really upset. And so he simulated shooting an arrow at me, and I smiled and put thumbs up. And he's, he was angry. The bell rang. He came after me. Now, I had Charlie horses before, but I've never had anybody try to break my legs. He kicked me in the legs. You ever see those dogs you squeeze, the eyes pop out? Oh, <laughs> I know. I mean, that kind of pain. I said, "Whoa!" So after the first round, I told my brother, "What do I do?" He said, "Kick him back." I said, "Oh yeah, okay." <laughs> the second round came. I went out there and I full. I mean, full power. I had big legs, full power kick, and he leg checked. Boop. Oh, that hurt it worse. Oh my shins. I said that hurt it worse. And then I was telling my brother, "Brother, he man, he smells bad. I don't know what you know." And then I see in the corner, he's spraying stuff. On his, on his legs. I didn't know it was numbing spray, but he was spraying stuff and my eyes were tearing. So I told my brother, what do I do? Then he clinches me and starts elbowing me. Now all the Americans are thinking he's cheating. Now all the Americans are getting pissed. So I'm a good judo man. So every time he clinched me, I didn't know what to do. So I blocked, hit his body, I blocked, and then I just grabbed him, I picked him up, and I threw him on his head. Boom! He got back up, I grabbed him, threw him. Every time he clinched me, I threw him, boom. And the Thai people think I'm cheating because they never seen that. And they're thinking, you know, so now all the Thais are getting pissed, all the Americans are getting pissed, <laughs> and we're fighting, and we're going at it up into the ninth round. The ninth round, in the, in the fight started in the audience. And so the fight started up the bleachers, and I, my mother and my sisters were there, so I stop, I jump up on the ring to see, and I see my brother escorting my mother and my sisters out. Hey, and the fight started like a wave. It went up and it went around. Oh, All the way, the whole arena, the, the Americans and the Thais, they just fighting mm -hmm. against each other. And then after that, uh, so, they, the, the, and so they were talking about stopping the fight, stopping the fight. They were saying, stop the fight, stop the fight in the ninth round. And so after that, um, uh, they stopped the fight because the, the, by then the helicopters came. It was the craziest thing. Uh, police officers came and stuff trying to. A, a riot went like crazy. Wow. Now, this is the first time, <clears throat> you know, anybody, Americans, ever seen Thai fighters. We never seen <laughs> Thai fighters before. I never saw that before. And then the rest is history. Then they wanted to know, ja the Japanese wanted to know who I, who's this American. Is actually be the Thai guy. And. So I get an invitation, my sister and I, we go to Japan, and I'm wearing gi bottoms, long pants. And they're saying, 
I can't wear them. I have to wear shorts. I said, no. I said, I'm a martial artist. I'm a traditionist. I wear pants. And I said, if, if you think I need these pants to give me power, I said, I don't. I said, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm a martial artist and I'm a traditionist. And so they said, they figured I was going to get knocked out anyway. They said, okay, okay. So I go out there. And so I end up stopping. I end up stopping um, Suzuki mm -hmm. in, this, in the fifth round. I stopped him. And then after that, uh, uh, Okao just finished retiring, and Suzuki took it. So Okao came out, out of retirement, and he's picking, and he's on, he's, and he challenges me. So I said, I'll be back. So I went back three months later, and I fought Okao. So he didn't come into the weigh-in, and I'm thinking, well, where's my opponent? But he didn't come to the weigh-in. So I said, and so I said, I don't care. I I, I showed up. So I, I get in the ring and there he is. And I looked at my brother and I said, he is not at 140. I said, look at those thighs, man. I said, the mountain goat thighs, huge legs. And I said, I said, one of those legs are at 142 pounds. <laughs> what, just one of the legs? And I said, it is what it is. And so my brother says, watch out. He's known for power kicking. And, and my brother kept on saying that. So when the bell rings, he went like this. I looked down, and he hit me with an overhand right. The first round, hit me with an overhand right. I hit the ground. I looked up at him, and he had this little smirk. And I just said, you just woke up the sleeping giant. I said, now I know what time it is. And so I got up, and I stopped him in the fourth round. The rest is history. And then after that, then uh, how they justified me beating them is uh, they said There's, I'm Japanese. I have Japanese in my sister and, and my ancestry. And I said, okay. So I started fighting for the Japanese. They started bringing Thai people from all over the place into Japan, and I started fighting for them. And uh, I became part of them. And then I started going to every third world country, introducing uh, you know uh, kickboxing to the world every third world country. So the hard part was not so much fighting my opponent, the hard part was after I stopped my opponent to get from the ring back to the dressing room. Because then I had to contend with their countrymen, their families, and such and such. And sometimes I go in the dressing room, my legs will be bleeding. What they're sticking me with, I have no idea, but they have people surround me. And it was crazy. So the hard part was not the fight, it was about getting from the ring back to the, back to the dressing room. So. Up to this day, uh, uh, so I, I started to, I started to uh, when I wasn't fighting, actually I was doing movies back and forth. I would, do, I would do a movie and then after that I'd get trained and defend my title. And then I'd do a movie and then I'd train <laughs> and defend my title. So up to this point, uh, I wrote the first, kick, uh, the first kickboxing book and that was in 78. Because in 78, kickboxing was not known around the world. So I got that and I, I took my book, and my book became the Bible in every third world country. Even where they could not, you know, because it was under dictatorship, they had to train underground. So they got my videos and they got my books and trained underground because it was all, uh, you know, uh, it was against the law to, right. to do any, that, that kind of training. So I just went to every third world country there was and passing and building the sport of kickboxing to where my last fight was in 94 and and the Gracies came in at, at 89, 90, challenging everybody and this and that. And so, uh, and after I finished fighting, there was no really no more heels in kickboxing at the time. And so from 95 to 2000, everybody started to go into mixed martial arts. And everybody started saying, well, if you want to do, if you want to do this cage fighting, then you need to learn how to ground fight, you need to learn how to box, you need to learn how to, and so they, everybody started to intermix, right. you know, and it became mixed martial arts. 2000 came around, everybody is fighting the cage, everybody's mixed martial artists, everybody's mixing everybody with everything. Up to this point, and uh, the UFC, you know, really took off, and 
to this point where it became the number second largest uh, sport in America, wow. next to boxing. Boxing was first. I mean, uh, 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 football was first. Then it was uh, UFC. Wow, unbelievable. Well, I mean, I was born in '71, so. <clears throat> Yeah, he's a legend before I was even born, and then uh, through the next, you know, couple decades. That's just unbelievable story. Well, you know what happened? Because like, it, what happens? I was in the '60s. I was just so advanced that I was making all these kids cry. And you had to be 18 years old to be black belt. And at 14, you know, all these black belts, you know, that uh, you know. Uh, including, you know, Mr. Parker and all of them were, all the parents were complaining that I was, you know, that they didn't want to fight me because uh, they didn't want their kids to fight me because I was hurting them. So, 28 decided to test me. And I'm 14 years old. Now, I'm excited in a three-day test, non-stop, all of them, and after I passed, they all kicked me, except my oldest brother, he put me in the hospital because he was so angry that that I broke tradition. Now this is, I'm 14 in the 60s, and so now I go to the tournament, and I got my black butt up, my show done, and I go up to the 14 year olds, and they say, no, you have to go with the black butt. I said, no, no, I'm 14. And they said, no, you're black butt, you have to go. And I said, are you kidding? My brother said, yeah, you wanna be black butt? <laughs> and so now, I'm looking at Chuck Norris, I'm Skipper Muller, I'm Joe Lewis, I'm looking at all these guys, and I got my tail between my legs, and I'm walking over there like, and so they thought I was a cute kid, patting my head this and that, and I beat the tournament. And so I was the cute kid for the first two tournaments, and then after the third tournament, they all came right next to me and said, you want to be black, but let me show you what it takes, and they came after me. I mean, no kidding, they came after me, because back then, and there was, you know, there was no rules. Sweeps on, I mean, we were, we were fighting on concrete and wood. Sweep, take down, boom, stomp it. I mean, it was no, I mean, it's most of them, bloody nose, spit across, I mean, it was, it was just, and you can always tell the warriors, tape around the knuckles, tape around the toes. you know, that guy was serious. And people came from around the world to the internationals to prove that they were the best. The, national, the internationals was, the place to go to prove yourself that you were the best. And uh, that's where I come from. Awesome. I come from that background of all the best of the best. Awesome. I'm just thankful I can still understand myself from all the wars because, you know, I've had over 240 fights, but I, I defended my title 63 times. But that's not even calling my martial art. These are kickboxing. It has nothing to do with my martial art fighting. And my martial art fighting, since, you know, since 63, every tournament I went to, I used to get, I used to come home with three to, uh, three to five trophies for single, for doubles, for team, for, uh, for kata, for, you know, uh, I always come home with anywhere from three to five trophies. And my mother would get so upset at me, she said, what are we going to do with these, these trophies? And I said, well, I thought you would be proud. She, we had no place for we. We had a room. The room was full of trophies, and, and she didn't want them. All. She said, take them out. So then, every time I won trophies, <laughs> when I was younger, I was just crazy. I used to say, look at this pretty girl, and I said, you know what? You see that trophy there? I'm gonna win this for you. <laughs> and I would win it. I'll give her the trophy because I know I knew I couldn't take it home. <laughs> My mother wouldn't let it. Wow. So I would win the trophies for her. And uh, you know, being young and crazy. Uh, it was, it was a good, it was a good, should I say journey, it was a good journey uh, to this point and uh, I had a chance to really travel the world, compete with the best, work with the best masters in every country and they had interpreters that they wanted to know, you know, I was able to work with Oyama, Master Oyama from Japan, I worked with some greatest from different countries the best of their best in their country. I had awesome. a chance to compete and fight against and be able to work against, work with the masters of that country. So I really count my blessings to this point that 
I, you know, I still got a lot of piss and vinegar in me, you know, and as far as I'm concerned, I can still do what I was doing at 20, I can still do it right now. Awesome. I'm just thankful I can still understand myself. Oh, uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, unbelievable stories, taking it back many, many years, and just the names and celebrities he's can come in contact with, and the legends in, in, the, in, this, in all these sports and from all these countries, just the tutelage he received is just phenomenal. So I, I want to hear more about some of your movies, your famous movies that you've been in, and how you got into Hollywood and your stunt training, and, and just take us through that whole, that whole process. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, this was, actually I had a student in, in 60, this was like 65, 67, was actually an actor that I was training. And he had asked me to come on set, if I, if, if I would come on set to watch him. And I said, sure. So I said, and so, me not understanding any of it, and so I'm actually, I go to set and I, I tell my name, they let me in on the set, so. Now I don't know what to do, and then, so he's on there, and he says, just make yourself at home, there's drinks right there, you know, and la la la. And I said, okay. So I wasn't thirsty anything, I just wanted to see him. So I'm in front, you know, so I'm standing in front of the camera with everybody there, and just, cause I didn't know where to go, so I would just, in there doing this and this, I'm watching, and I'm looking, I didn't know the camera was, was actually facing me, but I'm standing this and I'm looking, and so I'm, and I'm watching some of them getting ready, and this, so I'm in my head, you know, just taking the kinks out, you know, and uh, because, you know, basically, I've never been on a set, so, you know, I'm just taking the kinks out, and so they said, okay, you know, we're gonna set up, and so the director looks at me and he says, you, I said, yes. He said, what's your name? I said, I'm Benny. You know, and they said, okay. Uh, you move over here. And I he said, move over there. And I said, okay. So I moved over here. And I'm waiting. He says, okay. He says, uh, can you do something? And I said, like, what would you like me to do? He says, uh, what can you do? I said, I can do anything. He said, can you uh, do some kicking stuff like that? So I said, yeah. So I started kicking and punching, moving, jump spinning back, he jumped this and that, and all these different things. He looked, he said, wow, you work with him, do something, put something together real quick, and you do, and I said, sure. And uh, so I choreographed some move between me and this guy, this and told him this and that, and we did it. And I'm, I'm, I'm a natural when it comes to, I mean, I've done so many exhibitions and so forth, and, you know, uh, comfortable so, on the camera. Yeah, so I didn't had no idea what, and so I I just I don't know why I just said sure yeah there was nothing to me, and I went out there boom 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 and I you know because when you do demonstration from a live audience you know to capture them and I knew how to capture the live audience so I just figured yeah, I'm just doing an exhibition and boom I I did I did a lot of acting in it and boom good all the different facial expressions and noise and hit the ground, boom, it's bland, and this and that. <laughs> and next you know it, he said, oh, I like that, okay, do the same thing. And then they, they changed the cameras. And, and so the guy, the, my student, came up to me and says, oh, Sensei, do you know what just you just did? And I said, yeah, the guy just told me to do something. And I put it, he says, that's the director. Yeah, I said, well, whatever. He asked me if I can do something, and I, I put something, he says, Sensei, did you know that you're in the movie? I said, I am? He said, yeah. They filmed you. I said, and? He says, you're in the movie. And I said, okay, so what do I do? He says, they're changing the camera. You got to do it again. I said, okay. He says, could you do the same thing? I said, he said, I'm sorry, Sensei. <laughs> and, and, and so they changed the cameras and changed the, the speeds and stuff. And, they started there, did it again, boom, 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 boom. Then they did it again, did close-ups, and this and then they said, you make the faces, and then, yeah, that, that was nothing for me. And after that, they said, okay, can you come back tomorrow? And I, and I just said, come back tomorrow. And so, you know, they came and signed, they said, well, what's your name? I told my name, and they said, your name is not on here. And I said, 
No, no, I just, uh, I just came. I came with my student, and he said, "You mean you didn't interview on the unit?" And I said, "No, I just came." I said, "That guy told me." He says, "That's the director, by the way." He said, "Well, he told me to do something." This and he says, "You're not in the movie." I, I, and I said, uh, "I said, I came to visit." And so he went over there and told the director. And the director said, "You mean you didn't audition for this?" I said. I just came to visit with him, and so and so he said. Since uh, he said, he told the director, "This is my is my uh, kickboxing instructor." He said, I, "I invited him over to watch me." He said, "You got to be kidding me! He's great!" <laughs> and, and so they tap hollered me, and I said, "Great, that's good." I didn't even know what that meant. Then after later on, I said, "What does that mean? What did he say?" Then he says, "Your union. He tap hollered you." And I said. What does that mean? He says, your union. I said, what does that mean? He said, you're part, you know, you're part of the movie industry now, and this and that. And I said, I didn't care. I said, okay. So he said, but you got to be here tomorrow, this and that, and you got to report to him. And, and, and I said, okay, I can do that. So I, and, I, and I said, how long do I have to be here? He said, as long as they want. He said, they're going to pay you for it. And I said, money? I said, yeah, they're gonna pay. I said, for, they're going to pay me to, to do that? I said, man, I, I just did it because I, I was having fun. had no idea what I was doing. But anyway, in through all that, I came back, finished the movie. It was called Down the Drain. They made me, they gave me some dialogue and said, can you say this and this? And I said, sure. To me, I was just doing an exhibition. So I played a drunken hobo. Hey, and uh, these bank robbers robbed, and, and I was I was acting like I was drunk on the bench, and and they came and they they saw cops were coming. They said, and they put the the, uh, the I guess it was a, a suitcase, and they put it next to me, and they and they tore the. They said, save this with your life. Here's half of it, and I'll give you the other half when I come back for it. And I said, sure. And I'm looking at the hundred dollars, thinking that's a lot of booze, that's a lot of grapes, you know. And I said, all right. So I'm supposed to be acting like I'm drunk, you know, a drunken hobo. So then uh, he doesn't come back for a while. So I get up, I see a police uh, car. I get up and I take this, and I'm supposed to walk over there and, and knock on the window and say, somebody gave me this, and they're eating lunch, and they're saying, get away, get away. So I'm trying to tell them that. I got a suitcase. I don't know what's in it, but I tried to give it to him. They're saying, get away. So I walk back. I go back to the bench and I push down. And I'm thinking, looking at this half a hundred dollar bill, waiting for this guy to give me the other half. And so these guys, these guys see, and they actually saw him give this to me. So they come to get the suitcase. And I'm thinking, if I don't, if the guy, if I don't have the suitcase, I can't get the other part. So I grab the suitcase, dig it, and I find, and I, and I take them both out. But I do like the drunken monkey, right? This and that, and I take him out. And next thing I know, it, they're telling me that uh, one thing led to another. Next thing I, know, I was in the movie. So I finished the movie, and it was called Down the Drain. And I thought, okay. So, and then when they gave me a check, I said, what's this for? They said, that's your, that's your paycheck. I said, for what? They said, you know, so I said, Hey, I, I didn't come here to get paid for it. I, I took free. He says, "Thank you," and, and they said, "You gotta be kidding me." I said, "I did. I didn't come here to get paid for this. I just having a good time." And he said, "He said you must be new in the industry." I said, <laughs> "I have no idea." I said, "All I know is I came and la la la," and I looked at it and I said, "They paid me this much for that?" I said, "You gotta be kidding me." I, and I couldn't believe that they were paying me. So after that, I was union, and so my student said, hey, do you want to come and do another one? I said, what I was doing, I said, and they're going to pay me for that? And they said, yeah. I said, sure, why not? Yeah. So, uh, and then somebody, uh, I did something real simple. It was a real simple thing. And then Force 5 came, and they said, uh, uh, Joe Lewis, Bonjour, myself, Richard Norton. There was, you know, uh, and there was five of us, and I co-started that. 
and, and uh, it was called Force Five, and that was the first my first really feature film. Yeah. And the rest, uh, the rest is history. Uh, what you, uh, how I got into the film industry. Tell us uh, about the uh, the most famous uh, movies so far. Well, what? you know what I mean. Uh, I tell you what, uh, with Patrick Swayze, you know, Roadhouse. Uh, uh, I really, to me, I really love that one. But with with uh, uh, John Cusack, you know, and Gold Point Blank, and uh, with Jackie Chan, uh, you know, uh, Down the Drain, and I did with, uh, you know, I did uh, Street Fighter. I mean, I go on and on. I mean, you know, with uh, Lou Gossett Jr., you know, I did uh, the Gladiator with, uh, uh, I mean, I could go on and on and on with different movies, I mean, different actors, but, you know, basically, there's not too many stars I did not work with, you know, and uh, I, I worked uh, with Sylvester Stallone on, you know, uh, in the prison movie, you know, and some of them, I can't even remember the, I mean, I've done so many movies with every top celebrity, top star of the movies, and uh, I just, you know, to me, it wasn't, you know, I mean, if I was doing a movie, I was doing a movie. Right. I, I turned down a, a five-picture deal, and and they said, oh, you're that big that you can turn down a five-picture deal, <laughs> this and that, and I said, I'm getting ready for a fight. My love is for the fight game. Right. And so they got really, they got real angry at me for a while. Yeah. And they wouldn't hire me for anything because they tried to blackball me from the uh, from the film industry because wow. I turned down I turned down the five picture deal blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and but to me it didn't matter I said you know that's something I can do my love was teaching right. my love was teaching more than the fighting the fighting I can do the acting I can do but the teaching I love doing yeah. so the movie industry was something that. I started traveling in different countries and understanding what it was all about. But I, you know what? I said, this is stunt work? I said, I've been doing this since since 63, I've been doing this, and you call this stunt work? I didn't know that was stunt work. I was doing exhibitions and that, falling, jumping, back flipping and all this and that. I was doing it anyway, and I said, and you call that stunt work? I said, I call that exhibitions. Right. Exactly. You know? But they called it, you know, and I was natural. I mean, they, they, I was doing a, a, a scene on metal stairs, and it went down here, here, here on metal stairs. And they said, can, you know, you get kicked, can you go down these stairs and this and this? And I said, sure. So they said, an action, boom. I throw metal stairs, I'm rolling down, boom, 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 this, this, and I go down. And they changed it, and they said, can you do it? And I said, yeah. I did it again, boom, 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 I did it three times. And they said, that's a cut, that's beautiful, and so, you know, that's, and so, the next day, I mean, I was sore. Right. The next day I went over there and I told this, one of the guys, I said, man, you, you gotta watch that craft service, you're eating too much, you're getting heavy, and he picked up his shirt. And I said, what's that? He said, pads. I said, why, why do you have pads on? He says, I'm going over the table, I said, you wearing all that? <laughs> and so I touched his knees, he had knee pads, he had this pad. I said, going over the table, you put it? He said, yeah, in case I have to do it 10 times. I said, so what? And I said, why do you, he said, everybody does. And I said, he, and I went over there and I touched his stuff. he had pads on. I said, why are you guys wearing pads? He says, as a stunt man, then I started learning about stunt work. Uh. Hey, I was going down these metal stairs with no pants on or this and that, falling this and because I had no idea. Unbelievable. I had no idea. Nobody ever taught me. Right. So I had to learn the hard way. Yeah, you what did. stunt work was. <laughs> I had no idea what stunt work was. But anyway, that's how I started in the film industry, and then I started doing more dialogue. But all that was, it was so easy for me. It was, you know, because I've been trained. I've been doing that since I was 10 years old, exhibitions. You know, stuff like that in front of live audiences and with my family. So that kind of stuff, they just called it, you know, they called it stunt work to me. I, I was an exhibition. Wow. Awesome story. Hey, uh, it's, it's Sarah, Sarah, you go over. Sarah, oh, excuse me one second. Um, this mic picks up everything. So if you guys are going to chat, like, probably close the door for us. Yeah. Just so, thanks. Thanks. No worries. I didn't want it to uh, interrupt. Uh, thank you. So, uh, so now with your with your 
background in, in the Hollywood, now you're doing choreographing for Hollywood, right? I've been, uh, I'm a stunt coordinator. Actually, I was doing, uh, I did uh, uh, second doing directing. I did it uh, on uh, The Crow when Brandon Lee actually uh, had that accident and uh, got shot or he died on the movie. They called me in. And I came in, I, I was step coordinating it, plus I was uh, directing, second year directing on that and stuff. And uh, it, uh, from that point on, I, I, uh, I was doing second, I mean, I, the second year directing is something, you know, I really didn't want to get, but uh, as a stunt coordinator, I had some great, great mentors and uh, as a uh, uh, coordinator, I mean, uh, Bobby Bass was one, and Jimmy Nickerson's, and all that. I mean, these are the great stunt coordinators back in you know, back in the '60s and '70s, and, uh, and you know, even to this day. But a lot of them are, are passed away, but they were great mentors to me in the film industry, teaching me, uh, you know, keeping me under the wing, teaching me, and I would just, it was just, uh, I was learning so much about cameras and film and speed and. You know, directing and, and, and it's like I learned so much from them that uh, I just, it was just something to me, it was natural, easy for me because Fantastic. it was natural for me. I've always thought, since I was 14 years old, I've always thought I was a better teacher than a fighter. Yeah. Always. Even though I held the title and this and that, but to me, the fighting is something I can do, the teaching, I love doing yeah. I knew that when I was 14 years old. I had one of the, I had the biggest fighting gym in the world at 14 years old. And it was almost like 20,000 square feet. It was that big size. Whereabouts? Uh, that was up in Southern Tahunga. It was called the Samurai Dojo. And it was a samurai hat with cat eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that, was my, that was my patch, my logo patch. That's it, it was called the Samurai Dojo. So now tell us about your new location that you're, you're opening. So right now, uh, what I'm doing is uh, we're I opened up uh, the stunt school, but not to the public yet. But yeah. I opened up stunt acting school. But basically, I teach. Uh, I teach internal training. I teach uh, internal training is more what I call the art of war. Is mental warfare, physical warfare, spiritual warfare, character warfare. All have energy that attacks. And so that's what I teach. I teach the physical part to me. I do and something I will not do. Fantastic. I only teach. Only what I know. I teach what I've experienced. I teach from my experience. Not something I read or somebody told me that and I just be a car salesman and pass it on to somebody else like I know what I'm talking about. I only talk about what I've done, what I, what I do know, okay, and what, it be, uh, what is to be true. Awesome. Well, you heard it from the legendary Sensei Bang the Jet, the quintessential teacher. And I mean, it just wisdom beyond uh, belief so thank you sensei pleasure yes. thank you My going pleasure. beyond with us today now we're going to go live with him december 6th through the 13th look at the calendar for the set slot time for sensei benny the jet your key is and take a look he's got some amazing products and services out there so i have a feeling after hearing the last bit i mean he could tell a better story than anybody but uh, i think his wisdom and his coaching his teaching methods are what what is is why I'm sitting here today with them. It's just it's it's so phenomenal to hear. So thank you so much and uh, lots of love. We'll talk to you guys soon. Yes. Yes.